Now that we have some basic understanding of the main elements of a worksheet, we are going to discuss how to navigate around a spreadsheet and how to use Excel ribbon in menus and select data in a worksheet. In order to open any new file or sample files in Excel, we click on File. This will show the backstage view of Excel. Here we can create a new workbook or open, save or print a workbook. We can also access Excel options. Now we will open our sample file, which I have taken from Kaggle, which is free to use for educational and research purposes. We click Open and either select it from my recent list or click Browse to find the data file we want. The first thing we should do is learn about the ribbon and menus. The top of ribbon has several tabs, which are normally the same used in Microsoft other products, such as the Home, Insert and View tabs while others might be new, such as formulas, data, and power pivot, which you can add in by going to Excel options. If you need more workspace for any task, you can hide the ribbon by double-clicking any tab, and to unhide it, we do the same. The other option is to use the shortcut key Ctrl plus F1. The ribbon is organized into groups of buttons so that you can easily find them. Like on the Home tab, we have groups for font, alignment, number, style, cells, editing, and so on. Some of these groups contain all the available buttons on the ribbon when viewing in full screen, such as styles and cells. But other ribbon groups have more options, which we assess by clicking the little arrow icon in the bottom right corner of the group, as can be seen here on the font group for example. The next item I want to point out is the Quick Access Toolbar at the top of the screen above the ribbon. As the name suggests, this is where you can quickly access the tools you use most often. As we already have some tools in this toolbar, such as Save, Undo, Redo, New and Open. But what if we want to add some more useful tools, then we can do this by clicking the drop down arrow in the toolbar and then select the tool we will use a lot, such as Sort Ascending. That will be added and we will also add the Sort Descending button. And still, if we need more, we select more commands and then add more tools from the popular commands. Now let's navigate around the worksheet. We can simply use the arrow keys to move left, right, up and down one cell at a time but we can also use page down and page up to move around a bit faster, which is especially useful if we have lots of rows of data and to move even quicker up or down a large data sheet, we will use the vertical scroll bar and to move left or right, we will use the horizontal scroll bar. Again, these things are very useful when we have large data sets. There are also some useful shortcuts which we can use, such as Ctrl plus Home key takes us back to the start of the worksheet, that is cell A1. Ctrl plus N takes us to the cell at the end of a data in the worksheet. Ctrl plus Down arrow takes us to the end of the column we are in, while Ctrl plus Up arrow takes us back to the top of that column. Therefore, a quick way to find out how many rows of data we have in our worksheet is to go to the first cell in a data and press Ctrl plus down arrow to see the last row of data. So here you can see we have 204 rows. Now to go back to the top again, we will use Ctrl plus home. This will bring us to the top. Now we have learned how to navigate around a worksheet and how to use its ribbon and menus. Let's figure out how to select data. This step is very important because we often need to select data to copy it or move it or select it in a formula. The simplest selection is a single cell, usually done with the mouse or with the directional arrow key. The next step is to select multiple cells together and this can be done either with the mouse by dragging from one cell to additional adjoining cells or we can use the shift key with the directional arrow keys. Next up is selecting a single column or row which is done by selecting the letter at the top of a column or the number on the left of a row. You can also select multiple columns and rows by clicking the mouse button, holding it down and dragging across more columns. But if it's not easy for you to use the dragging option, then you can also select the column first, then hold shift plus arrow keys to select multiple columns. The same applies to rows as well. 
but what if we have data in unlinked rows or columns that is not next to each other we can select the first column then use the control key to select another unlinked column such as columns G and I in this case. If you want to select the whole worksheet, you can do this by clicking in the top left corner of the cells. However, this will select the entire worksheet, including all the empty rows and columns without data. So to select only the whole data in the worksheet, we can use the shortcut Ctrl plus A. It is to be noted that when selecting data in cells, rows and columns, there are three types of cross symbols that we normally see when working with selected cells. First one is the large white cross that we see when we select the cell as shown here in cell A2. This is the select cross that we have been using in this video to select cells. The second type which we see is when we hover over the bottom edge of a cell and see a thin black cross type symbol with arrows on each point. This is the move symbol and it moves the cell data to another location. The last type is the small thin black cross that is seen when we hover over the bottom right corner of a cell. This is the fill handle or copy symbol. It fills or copies the cell data to another location. In this video we have learned how to navigate around a spreadsheet, get familiarity with the ribbon, menus and discuss how to select data in a worksheet. In the next series we will discuss how to enter data, how to copy and paste data and format data in a spreadsheet and how to use Excel functions and formulas.